Hello and welcome to our online worship service for Sunday, August 23rd, 2020. Please join me in prayer. Our prayer comes from Psalm 138, verses 1 through 8. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Amen. Hello, friends. Welcome to Time with Children. It's good to be with you today. Today, our story comes from the Old Testament. It's a story about a baby named Moses. And this is from the book of Exodus, chapter 2. The new king of Egypt was very mean, the meanest king you've ever seen. The people of Israel lived in his land, since he did not like them. He gave a command. Make them our slaves, the king said one day. Get all of the Hebrew boys out of my way. I don't want them here. They all have to go. I am the king, and it will be so. During that time, a man and his wife were blessed with a boy, a tiny new life. His mother kept him hidden inside, but soon her baby was too big to hide. She made a basket from tar and from reeds to float in the river among the tall weeds. The sweet baby boy stayed safe and dry as his sister watched from the bushes nearby. Along came a princess, the evil king's daughter. She found the basket floating in the water. She saw the baby and held him so tight. Don't cry, she said. I'll make things all right. The baby's sister ran over to say, Do you need a nanny? I'll find one today. Yes, said the princess. Please do not delay. The 
The sister ran home to find her mother. Then they ran back to get her brother. The princess said, here is your fee. When he is older, bring him to me. The mom loved her son and she watched him grow, but soon it was time to let her son go. The princess was happy the day that he came. She said, you are Moses. That is your new name. As Moses grew up, God's people were sad. They worked hard as slaves. This made Moses mad. He tried to help them, but hurt them instead. The king told his helpers, I want Moses dead. So Moses went out of the palace that day. He ran to the desert far, far away. Boys and girls, the story of Moses is one of our really great stories of the Old Testament. And what it tells us is that even though the king had made a decree and he thought he was in charge, God was in charge all along. God knew Moses, God loved Moses, and God took care of Moses, just like God takes care of us. Will you please join me in prayer? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for the story of baby Moses. Thank you for taking care of him. Thank you for taking care of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining me this day. Have a great day. Bye. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 8, through chapter 2, verse 10. This story takes place after the time of Joseph, an Israelite man who had been much respected in Egypt. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Now the Hebrews were slaves at this time. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pitham and Ramses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra and the other Puah, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could no longer hide him, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds in the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, 
Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse it for me and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. On this Sunday, the fourth Sunday of August, we would normally have homecoming here, a big gathering of friends and family, friends of the church from all over. We would have a gigantic potluck lunch downstairs. Times are different today. Today we may not be together, yet we can still do something that we do every homecoming. We can give thanks for the strength and resilience of those who came before us. This church is over 260 years old, an accomplishment that would not be possible without the strength provided by God and the resilience showed by the people. Today we give thanks for those who came before us, for Moses and the Hebrew people, for ancient Christians who faced persecution. Here in this congregation, we have some stories about times of resilience and strength in the face of great trouble or crisis. In the middle of the Civil War, the church burned down. It was not this same building, a previous building. The minister showed up one Sunday to find the church building reduced to ashes. So he held worship under the trees. During the Great Depression, there was worry here about paying the bills and worry about whether the church could afford electric service as many people were getting in their homes at that time. Yet somehow the church managed. They paid the bills, they kept going through the depression, through war, through times of financial struggle. This church has been resilient and has kept going strong. Now, the story here from Exodus is about resilience and strength. But before I go any further, I must mention that there is a humorous element to this story too. A little cheeky, I guess. Think of it, Pharaoh, this grand king of Egypt, the greatest of empires of the time, is afraid of his workers. He needs these people to be enslaved and oppressed so that he feels better about himself. He sends the Hebrew men to make bricks and build his cities. He orders the Hebrew boys killed. And I wondered, where did he think more workers would come from if he had the boys slaughtered? Now he thinks the Hebrew women and girls are no trouble, yet Pharaoh's own daughter makes arrangements with a Hebrew girl and her mother to adopt a Hebrew boy and later to bring the boy, now a young man, into Pharaoh's home. Sneaking out uh, to bring in a boy that your father had wanted killed requires a certain amount of nerve, fearlessness, inner strength. Deliberately going against everything your father believes. Some people would call that gall. I call it courage. This is a story of people mustering inner strength. Sometimes in our lives call for that strength. We do not know where we will get it. I believe that God provides. It seems that so often we look elsewhere for strength. We look for someone to save us. And in the examples we see today, we see a number of people, women in this story, who fear God, look to God, trust God, trust that God will provide them what they need to get through a current time of crisis. Why do we keep looking for someone else when it is right here? Why do we look for someone else to save us? 
As I read in the opening prayer from Psalm 138, the Lord perceives the haughty from far away, but the Lord regards the lowly. In the Bible, the idea of God bringing the haughty to heal is mentioned at least 20 times. Why do we look to those who appear strong when God gives us strength? Why do we look for those who are mighty in the ways of the world when we have a mighty God with power beyond anything the world can imagine? The king, Pharaoh, appears strong on the outside, yet his daughter, the princess, is strong and courageous on the inside. The midwives, too, Moses' mother, Moses' sister, they display almost unimaginable courage. And later we read that Moses himself, and we'll read about him more in the coming weeks, Moses himself has that same inner strength. Now he doubts from time to time because he is human. Yet he displays unimaginable strength through trust in God and through the resilience God gives him. So why do we look away or around somewhere else for strength when we can look within? God has already given us the Holy Spirit at work in our hearts and minds to give us what we need. Recently, some members of our church studied Jesus and the Disinherited, a book by Howard Thurman, an African-American theologian from the 1940s. Thurman writes about the inner life and about inner strength. He says, Anyone who permits another to determine the quality of his inner life gives into the hands of the other the keys to his destiny. When we allow someone else to determine what our inner life is like, we give the keys to our lives over to that person. And those keys belong to God. Those keys belong to us. The key to our life is a gift that we share with our Creator. Recently, some examples of inner strength and courage have come to my mind. Our camp and conference center staff called on that inner strength provided by God's Spirit over the summer. We had a good summer camp season, and now with school starting and the students in the local area facing remote learning and many parents needing to be at work, our camp leaders decided to open the buildings to small groups of students to bring their laptops and do their remote learning. The students have access to the camp internet service and supervision from paid staff. Similar programs are going on across the country, in churches, in some schools, in businesses even. They call them pods. Now this is a brave new world. There are so many questions What if the students in the pod have trouble with the technology? What if five students raise their hand at once wanting help with five different subjects because they are all attending five different classrooms with five different schedules? Oh, it makes your head hurt. And I am so proud and happy that our camp has decided to take on this brave new program. At times like this, it becomes clear that we need to rely on courage provided by God. We need to summon the strength that emanates from the Holy Spirit. There is no one person who can make this pandemic go away. There is no Pharaoh who can wave a hand and uh, make it all better. I am beginning to wonder what kinds of leaders will emerge from this pandemic. Moses emerged from a time of crisis. Crisis came to him time and time again, and yet he continued to serve as God's leader for that very important time. Perhaps there is a child today in one of those remote learning pods who will learn lifelong lessons, lessons of resilience and reliance upon God. The boy Moses had a great many examples of courage set before him. I wonder, did his adoptive mother tell him the story of him being found? Did she tell him the story about those midwives and about his mother and sister 
who hid him away from the murderous Pharaoh? Did she wink at him when they were all together in the castle, knowing she had brought this Hebrew boy right there in front of her father's nose? Somehow Moses learned those lessons of strength and resilience. There was already a path laid before him, a path of reliance upon God. Let us be courageous for our children. Let us show them examples of resilience and reliance upon God's Spirit. Let us be trustworthy and strong, daring and dedicated during this time. God gives us the gifts that we need. They are there for us to use. Thanks be to God for this inner strength. Amen. And now I would like for, uh, to invite you to join me in our affirmation of faith, which is printed in our online bulletin. Let us say together, I believe in God, the I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I believe in God who heard the Hebrews' cries of oppression and still hears human cries today. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus dwelt among us and in him dwelt the fullness of God. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the burning fire within God's heart and within our hearts. I believe in God's calling to men and women of the past and God's new call to us today. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people. God of grace, hear our prayers today. For your church in every place, 
for your church gathered and your church remote. We pray that we may worship and serve you faithfully throughout all our lives. We pray for leaders and people in every land that they may know your way and do your will. We pray for justice throughout the world and ask that there would be peace and plenty for all through your provision, O Lord. We thank you for this earth you have made. We pray that it may flourish in beauty and show your glory. We lift up those today, Lord, who hunger and thirst, that they may be filled with good things. We lift up those who are ill or close to death, and we lift up those who grieve and pray that they may know your loving care. We lift up those who are making difficult decisions, those living in a time of crisis, and ask that you would lay the path before them of strength and resilience. We also silently lift up to you, Lord, those prayers, uh, joys, and concerns that are on our hearts. Receive all these prayers, O God, in the tenderness of your mighty hand, and strengthen our hands to serve you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, go out into the world in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good, return no one evil for evil, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you.